Happy Sunday. If this is your favorite day of the week, can I get an amen? Amen. Yes. Be with our family, family of God. That's one of the things that Alan Marshall touched on on Wednesday, and that we are all a family. Whether we're here, across the world, we are the family of God. And uh, hope everybody's having a great day so far. It's nice to have the beautiful weather. And uh, we're going to start in the Red Hand Book. 154. 154, he lives.
And may we also bless all the Christians, not just in our community, in our state, you know, all across the world. May we bless all the Christians that are fighting for you every day to serve for you as well. And may we bless this great country, the United States of America. Be with us through these days. May we grow stronger to you through your word, through our Christian lives, and through the world we live in our country. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, for the Pledge of the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. The Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag, to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. <laughs> My chorus music is somewhere, it's probably in the back, so I'm gonna, I know this song, I'll fly away, here we go.
be seated. Jesus is all we need. You know, when you open the Bible, you see a lot of special things in that Bible. But one of the best things that stand out in the Bible is what is written in red, because Jesus is talking to us. When I first started reading the Bible, and especially in the New Testament, I really started to take note of the words in red, the red letters. I came to learn that the words written in red were the words of Jesus. The words of Jesus fascinated me. In addition, although I don't understand them, or at that time, until now, and continually going, I knew they were greater and far than any words in any other book I've ever read before. One of the sayings that really grabbed my attention was the red letter words of Jesus that said, I am. I can remember highlighting them in my Bible one day and then being very special to me. I found that Jesus uses this, this term seven times in John. And as I gave thoughts on these words, I realized that Jesus is all I needed. Number one, he is the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. John 6, 35. He is the light of the world. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you will have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. John 8, 12. Number three, the gate. I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. And that's John chapter 10, verse 9. He is the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. That's read in John chapter 10, verse 11. He is a resurrection and life. I am the resurrection and the life. And anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. That's in John eleven twenty five. 25. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. John 14, verse 6. He is a true vine. I am the true grapevine, and my Father is a gardener. John 15, 1. The scriptures of Jesus Christ is further explained in John 8, 58. I tell you the truth, before Abraham was even born, I am which means that Jesus existed before his human life on earth. We are very blessed that every Lord's Day we are able to gather around this table for the Lord's Supper. In addition, we need to be connected to the true vine that will give us life every day, both abundant life now and resurrection to eternal life. Jesus at all times is all we need. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for that we come around this table. Be with us and prepare our hearts as we are partaking of the Lord's Supper that remember that the bread represents Jesus' body and the juice represents his shed blood. In Jesus' name, amen.
sung in the service in my heart is this time. As it says, we gather around the table and remember what Jesus did for us. The bread represents Jesus' body as we partake. And this juice represents the shed blood. Or someday they'll be with him in heaven. The tithing meditation I'll be reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. We all know that God provides everything for us. Uh, the blessings, everything we have, we want, we provide it for us, our talents to share with other people, we provide it for us. At this time, we're, we're commanded to give back to him a portion of what he has given to us. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we are truly thankful for all the blessings and the grace that you show us, Lord. We pray, Father, that you will create in each one of us a giving heart so that we will give a portion of what you have given us back to you to help further your kingdom. This we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Services are going to be the 29th, which is a Friday, at 2 p.m. here at the church. Okay, uh, Lauren, Maddie's daughter, needs prayer. She got out of it, not, I'm afraid it's not cancer. Uh, Don Reimer passed away in the church of Lola and her family. Dan Little's son has pain with arthritis. Their seven year old Abby is doing better. Now Keith Becky is losing her eyesight. Jack Jr. needs prayer. He has had a heart surgery. Yes, Jack. We uh, got an appointment with. Uh, Are you there? Do you have an appointment yet? Yeah? Okay, do you have an appointment with the doctor to find out see if and when he can have a surgery for his heart? Mac has my rings. And another Mac, Susie's brother in law, with a section in his foot that is not in the bone. Our sister Joyce, looking for a better job. And Steve asked if we pray for Marie and her husband. And Marie asked us to pray for Asha for multiple sclerosis. And also for Jonathan with cancer in his back. Steve asked us to pray for Joe and the kids. And for Diana. And Dean, but then they also need prayer. Jerry says you're going back to Portland. You're going back or have you got that? I uh, went on Thursday and um, 
I've got some news. Uh, they did the Reinhardt catheterization, which measures the pressure in the right side of my heart. And uh, normal was 20. The time before, I was at 75. And this time, the results came back that I was at 16. That's four points below the normal running, but they're jumping up and down. I don't feel any different, but. Uh, <laughs> Something about your normal end. Another thing, uh, my mom and two of my daughters are planning to come to Oregon for the salmon ceremony, and uh, hopefully they can get it all together and come, and uh, pray for them to have a safe trip to Fiji. No, that is, mom and sister coming to the salmon ceremony. Okay, I think I got one on the other side. Nerma, on that side, pain in your back. Gary, friends, French, Sherry, Sherry, family. Julie Allen, Rose, Sherry, Ashley, Praise. My sister's, and is on life support. Marine, nephew, Don, niece, Cass. And Liz has health problems. You need to have praise. Barbara, got a good doctor's report. I do. But I'm not quite sure what's in my neck, so I hope so. I need to get this called a bird letter, too, and then I'll have the left leg to my neck. Our bird's in the neck. Judy's low blood pressure is really bad. Let's see. I saw the doctor and gave me some medicine. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so glad I didn't know. I keep checking. Great. Doing better. Okay, we need to pray for the community because of the area. We say there are overdoses that are up now in this area. And we need to pray for the people that are shooting in Chicago. Anybody else? No. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> There'll be a service for Don on Saturday <coughs> at 11 o'clock. This Saturday? This Saturday at 11. What's that date? The 20th. 23rd. 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 Problem with vertigo, and they gave you medication for it. So. Uh, there is a uh, elders and deacons meeting today at uh, five o'clock. Five o'clock, elders and deacons meeting at five. Mm -hmm. yeah. My brother in law, Terry Rail, R A Y L, uh, is having so shoulder surgery um, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Your brother in law having surgery tomorrow? Shoulder? Shoulder. Anybody else? Oh, um, Jody Jordan's birthday, so we miss him at Jody Surgery. And um, Jolene is um, she's still not feeling good, very well, so she does have to come in for Lisa and Bruce is sitting at home with us tonight. I don't, I didn't hear her. Oh, she just said that she's at home. I didn't hear you. Did you hear me? <laughs> Part of it. Is that Noreen? Um, yes, Noreen is still not feeling very well. She needs more time to heal and get back to her old condition. But uh, they're treating it now, but she's not, uh, you know, she shouldn't. Celebrate Oregon's birthday. 
Okay. I'm reading. The word the first day is today. Today he had had one yesterday. And happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Welcome, people in the back behind you. This Tom? is Justin. And you guys all know this nice young lady here, and this is her Justin. Justin. Yeah. Okay, ladies ruling every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Last Sunday of the month, they have the same duration. Kids have Sunday school upstairs at 9.45. Men's breakfast is the last Saturday of the month. That dish is at 9 o'clock. And there will be a rally here at the church in August. I think there's no seven days yet. 456. 456. Anything else? Let's pray. Dear God, again, we ask that you be with those that have been involved in the shooting. I mean, we're going to be with those that are involved in the judges. Also, we ask that you be with those people in Ukraine. Continue to help the United States help them be able to serve you in a free country in the European area. We also ask that you protect the people of Romania, those who are very close to what's going on over there. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. You got special music? Please. Oh. Well, that's dramatic. Louise is going to do it. Okay. Okay.
Thank you, Louise. I've never heard that condition before. That's neat. <clears throat> well, this week we are mourning the loss of uh, Don and Bessie. And so I thought we might it might be a good idea to uh, revisit Psalm 23. So if you would like to turn with me to Psalm 23 this morning. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you that you are the Good Shepherd who watches over us and cares for us and guides us every step of the way through our lives. And we just pray, Lord, that you would speak to us through this passage once again and encourage us and give us strength. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The first thing that this psalm tells us is that our greatest need in life is to, to know and to follow our shepherd. Now, David is the, the author of this psalm, and David was a man of great courage, of great strength, who defeated his enemies, and he wasn't afraid of anything. He was a great king who ruled Israel for 40 years. But David also had a sensitive side, a vulnerable side, and that comes out a lot in the Psalms. The Psalms give us an intimate look inside the heart of David. David spent his early years as a shepherd, and he knew something about sheep. He, he recognized how much humans are like sheep. Sheep are totally dependent on their shepherd for everything. To get them to the right place. To help them to find the food that they need to eat. They're dependent on the shepherd to protect them. And there are all kinds of natural predators for sheep. And sheep aren't the smartest animals out there. They're directionally challenged. They're always going astray. And they're very fragile. They get wounded often. And the shepherd has to attend to their wounds. And we as humans, we're very fragile also. And we're constantly facing problems and we're constantly facing death, the death of friends, the death of loved ones. And oftentimes, you know, there's nothing that we can do about it. And being a, a shepherd, this was demanding you. You had to constantly live with the sheep. You'd stay with them day and night to take care of them, to protect them. And it was often dangerous for the shepherds as much as it was for the sheep. And David spoke of times when he had to defend the sheep against bears and against lions. Make sure that those sheep were okay. There were also thieves that would come along. And he had to constantly guard against thieves as well. So there was this constant threat of, of danger, not only for the sheep, but also for the shepherd. And in biblical times, and, and even today in the Middle East, the shepherd boys, they would lead their sheep. They would walk out in front of the sheep, and they would call them by name. And sometimes there were several shepherds with several flocks of sheep together. But then one of the shepherds would head off in a certain direction, and he would call to his personal sheep. And they would follow him because they knew their shepherd. And Jesus made an analogy to that when he said, My sheep will hear my voice, and I know them, and they know me, and they follow me. So sheep would be able to distinguish you know, their shepherd from any other shepherd that might be out there in the fields. And so David here, he's, he's speaking of God and he's saying, Yahweh, the covenant God who spoke this world into existence, who created each one of us in the womb, Yahweh is our shepherd. He has a relationship with his creation, with his sheep. And he enters into our hearts and into our minds and he, he watches over us, he protects us and he directs us. He feeds us. He makes sure that we'll, we are well cared for. And the Lord Jesus picks up the, the language here in John 10, and he says, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. And then he goes on to say, no one takes my life from me. I lay down my life on my own initiative. And I have the right to lay it down, and I have the right to take it up again. And Jesus is referred to the great shepherd. He's referred to as the chief shepherd, the good shepherd. And it describes what he did when he went to the cross. When he paid the price for our sin. Instead of a bear or a lion, 
He took on sin and death and hell and the devil. And he bore the wrath of God for our sakes. As a good shepherd, he laid down his life for his sheep. And in that same passage, he said, I have come that they might have life and have it in abundance. And notice David doesn't say the Lord is a shepherd. And he didn't even say the Lord is the shepherd, which was true. But what he did say is transforming because he says the Lord is my shepherd. And this is really the, the heart of the message of what, you know, this is what makes Psalm 23 so powerful, all these personal pronouns here. That he's my shepherd, that he's laid down his life for me. That he's constantly watching over me and protecting me and caring for my needs. And we need that because we like sheep, we're totally dependent on our shepherd. We need him for everything. We need him to keep us from wandering. We need him to feed us and to quench our thirst, to protect us from all the dangers that are out there. And we need him to attend to our wounds, our physical wounds, our emotional wounds. Our greatest need in life is to know our shepherd and to follow him as he leads us by his voice and by his word. And our greatest resource in life is the provision of the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. And these first four verses, they speak of the shepherd and, and how he provides for us. It speaks of the abundance of his provision. I won't be in want because he makes me to lie down in green pastures. And he leads me beside still waters, peaceful waters. Sheep need to feed and they need their thirst to be quenched. And one of the main jobs of the shepherd is to make sure that the sheep are provided for, that they have these resources constantly. And the promise for us is to know that we have a God who's not only going to take us to these green pastures, but He's going to enable us to lie down in those pastures. Now, an interesting note concerning this verse is the fact that sheep only lie down after they're well fed. When they've had enough to eat, then they lie down. And so David is saying, you know, there's going to be adequate provision for us, more than enough. And we can be rest assured that he will feed us until we're full and so that we can lie down in these green pastures next to these peaceful streams. So not only will the, the Lord be enough to quench our thirst, but also he brings us this peace. He brings us to these peaceful places where there isn't peace sometimes. He gives us that peace that surpasses all understanding. And we can rest in him and we can trust in him. And we can follow him as he guides us and sustains us and continually provides for us. And then David says, he restores my soul. He refreshes my soul. Because, you know, life has a way of constantly draining us. Draining us dry sometimes. It has a way of constantly sucking out those resources. But our promise is that Jesus said himself, I have come that they might have life and to have it in abundance. That their souls might be refreshed again and again. So not only does he provide for those external needs that we have, but he also gives us those internal resources that we need. He gives us life in abundance. He restores our souls when they become weary. He refreshes us when we get tired and weary. When we've been through too many battles, he's there to grab hold of us, wrap his arms around us, and refresh us once again. And then David talks about the, the Lord's guidance in our lives. 
He guides me in paths of righteousness, which just means he, he, he guides me along pathways that are right. He leads us to, to do what is right. He helps me to get to where I need to go, to live the life I'm supposed to live. He takes us along the, this destination that he desires for us because he knows it's the best destination for us. And he guides us. He doesn't drive us. In America, you know, a lot of times the, the shepherds drive their sheep. But uh, in Israel, in the Middle East, they guide their sheep. They lead them. And he will guide us at the right time in his way along that right path. And a lot of times we most likely, you know, we won't understand why he's leading us, where he's leading us, and what the circumstances are. But, you know, just like the sheep, the sheep don't know their destination. Uh, their responsibility is solely just to follow the shepherd, wherever the shepherd goes. And when we're following the shepherd, you know, we have this promise that he'll take us to that place where we need to be. And he'll take care of us, and he'll be there at the right time. He has all the plans and purposes of our life laid out before us. And he will guide us when the timing is right. And then David uh, shifts to something else here. The shepherd protects us in times of adversity, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The promise isn't that we'll be exempt from these, these things that come into our lives, but the promise is that the valley of shadow of death, it isn't a place that we're going to be trapped in with no way out, because notice what the promise is, that he will be with us and that he will lead us through the valley. He's going to lead us through that valley of the shadow of death. And sometimes it's literal death that we're facing, or we're facing the death of someone close to us. And we're, we're experiencing that up and close, personal, this week. But our promise is that our shepherd will be with us every step of the way, that he will lead us through those painful and sorrowful situations. Because death is never the final word. Death isn't the end. And notice as uh, David began this psalm, he spoke about the shepherd. But now as he begins to reflect upon those dark valleys, he begins to speak to the shepherd. So at the beginning he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, he, he. But then when he gets to the dark valleys, the thing that really stands out the most is that you're talking about the shepherd, you're talking to the shepherd. And he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They comfort me because the Lord uses them to protect us from our enemies. And they also help us to stay in line. And we become very close to God in those dark hours because we're constantly on our knees in those times. And it isn't he, he, but it's you, Lord. You are my shepherd. You were with me. You were my everything. And what we need to come to realize is that, you know, our greatest privilege in life is the presence, that constant presence of our shepherd. And David realizes, you know, that as he sits at the Lord's table, he gives us a new picture of sitting at God's table and being this honored guest. The Lord gives us the right to live our lives in fellowship with him. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So in the midst of those difficult things that are happening, there's this acceptance and enjoyment because we are still in the Lord's presence. And he says, you anoint my head with oil. Now they used to do this for honored guests. 
They would give you a place of honor and they would fill your glass to overflowing and they would anoint your head with oil. And you know, God's Holy Spirit is our anointing. The scripture says we are anointed by God's Spirit and He makes His home inside of us so that His presence is even more personal. He honors us with the greatest honor, we become his children. We are children of the king, and we can sit at the king's table. And he fills our cups to overflowing. He does all this in the presence of our enemies. Now our enemies will come and go, but they will never have the final word in our life. Because we know what he has done with our greatest enemy, our greatest enemy was death itself. And he's taken it out of the way. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? You have no victory here because Jesus has conquered death. And in its place, he's given us eternal life. And then David says, goodness and mercy shall follow me. It literally means that they will pursue you. They will track you down all the days of your life. Our shepherd's goodness and his mercy, his loving kindness, they are going to demonstrate themselves, you know, how wonderful God is, and he will prove that over and over again in our lives. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't have those difficult times, that we won't have those valleys, that we won't have enemies, but he will take us through those difficult times. And it doesn't mean that we will always know where the green pasture is. It doesn't mean that we will always lie down next to those peaceful streams, but whatever we're going through, he will be with us in all those experiences. He will lead us through them. And tomorrow, we will enter into his house. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And this morning, and for always, Bessie and Don are with the Lord in his house forever. Because the Lord Jesus was their shepherd. He laid down his life for them. He rose again, and he has given them this promise that I am the resurrection and the life. And those who believe in me will live even though they die. Paul said absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. And they will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In my Father's house, Jesus said, are many dwelling places. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And I will come again to receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Thomas asked Jesus, Lord, how do we know the way? And where are you going? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Bessie and Don, they followed that way, that truth, and that life. And now, they are in those many dwelling places, in the Father's house forever. Because the Lord, who shepherded them all of their lives, has taken them into his presence. And we grieve because we miss them. And it's okay to grieve. Jesus grieved over the death of his friend Lazarus. And grieving is normal. Just as long as Paul said, don't grieve like the rest of the world that don't have any hope. Because we know that there is hope on the other side. We know that they're with the Lord and he has promised them something else. He has promised that he has wiped every tear from their eyes. 
No more pain, no more sorrow, no more death. And the good news is, too, we will see them again. But we'll see them in their new bodies, in perfect health, and wearing a big smile on their face. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for the truth of your scripture, the comfort of your scripture. There's so many scriptures that talk about the hope that we have in Jesus and how you care for us how you're constantly looking out for us, watching over us, making sure that we're okay. And we love you so much because you first loved us. We thank you that you made a way for us then, that you died for us so that we could experience an eternal life, a life that goes beyond the grave, where we can be with you forever and ever in this house that you've prepared for us. We thank you for that promise that we have something to hold on to, that hope, and even though we don't understand all of what it's going to be, we know it's going to be wonderful. And you have promised to wipe every tear, every pain, every sorrow from our lives. And we thank you for that truth. And we pray that as we go through difficult times here on this earth, that we can hold on to those promises and know that they are true, and that we also will be with you one day. So thank you again, Lord, for your word. We pray that you will help us to grow and to learn more from you each and every day of our lives. We ask it in Christ's name. Thank you. 